to Facebook right the fuck now, ladies and gentlemen. What is up? Again, I am the Unknown Factor. I know that first feed fucked up, but that don't matter. Because, like, if you're over on No Fucks Given Radio right now, you've been bumping some dope-ass Lex the Hexmaster shit, and then you're hearing the intro for the No Fucks Given Hour. I should have made a special one for the 200th episode. But whatever, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter because we're live. No Fucks Given Radio, and I am your host, the Unknown Factor. And this is the 200th episode. Goddamn, Chuckles. Yo, what up, though? How's it going, man? Happy oh, 200th man. fucking episode. Whew. Whew. Ah, that's nuts. And, ladies and gentlemen, on the 200th episode, it'll only be appropriate to be one hell of a dope-ass motherfucking guest. So we got Magic Ninja's own Lex the Hexmaster. Lex, what's what good? Up, what up, what up? What's good? What's good? What's going on, everybody? How the fuck y'all doing tonight? Chilling? Hell yeah. First Hell of all, yeah. I'm getting fucking drunk as fuck on some Jaeger. That's why how fucking excited for the I am for this episode. Uh, I'm <laughs> the 40 right now, so it's all good. I'm the only one without a drink? Damn. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, somebody's got to drive the boat, so I guess I'm the sober right. driver. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. You're right, just... Right. You're just yeah, we're like we're me and Lex are just partying our shit off, and, and you're just like the dedicated driver, just helping us get home. Don't <laughs> right. go too off the fucking road and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how we are. <laughs> well, let's swerve it real quick then, right? Because I know we're missing the first question already. Chuckles. Okay. Oh yeah. So Lex, how you how you doing, man? I'm chilling right now, man. Up here, um, getting ready for this Christmas bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Spending money. Oh yeah. We- yeah, yeah. So before we get into the mouth of madness with you, so before we get to this, uh, I, we got one major question for you, dog. So that's we always do this for our first guest where we always get on the show. But for you, okay. man, what is the true meaning of life? True meaning of life? Wow. That's a serious fucking question, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Living? Um, <laughs> chilling? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That's, a, that's, that's some deep shit. I ain't drunk enough for that one yet, man. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> if I was fucked up, I'd be, I'd be here for the next half an hour telling you my, my philosophical outlook on life and what life is. But, um, <laughs> yo, life is just growth, man. I think life is growth and, um, and setting goals and, um, and accomplishing them. Like, if, if, if you're not, if you're doing the same thing that you did 10 years ago in life, you're obviously not living. You're just fucking alive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think life is growth. Everything grows and everything dies, you know? Um, so uh, just like we have to physically grow, we have to mentally grow and spiritually grow. So I think that life ultimately is growth, especially with having a child. If anybody has children, you watch your child unconsciously grow. One day you turn around and they're fucking walking. The next day you turn around and they're talking. And life will pass you by if you're not watching. So life is growth, in my, in, in my opinion. I think that growth is Everything. If you're not growing, then you may as well fucking put a bullet in your head right now. You know what I'm saying? Man, For real, man, though, I, yeah. I love how he was like, I don't know, and then gave what is definitely, in my opinion, in the top five, if not the top three answers we've ever gotten for that question, Chuckles. Exactly. We had like a couple, <laughs> of, a couple of people that said the exact same word. But try to come up with, like, the good words. But for you, man, that was a good answer, man. That's actually the truth about the true meaning of life is growth, man. Right, right, right. I mean, and we still grow and we, we still learn. I mean, I'm I'm still learning shit. I'm still learning this industry. I'm still learning about record sales. I'm still learning about touring. You know, as much as I've done it for the past two years, it's, it's always something to know. It's always that small little thing that may have been overlooked and why it didn't work before and why it's going to work the next time. That's growth. And that's life. Trial and error. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah, man. Exactly. I know I've had the pleasure. Because I remember. Of oh, see, I've had the yeah, pleasure of opening re- for you a couple times. I know you have as well, haven't you, Chuckles? Oh, yeah, man. It's like, now this 200th episode, man. Tell them the whole story how we fucking got onto this shit, dude. For real. What, this? Yeah, man, for real. I ain't telling that whole story. That's a long ass story. <laughs> We'll get to that shit later on, though. So. This is this is Lex's interview. I ain't trying. It's it's a, it's a long. I don't know. See, this is my. It's funny. My co-host is the first motherfucker I ever interviewed. Yeah, and then Ooh. 
Chuckles. He's the first dude I ever interviewed. Oh, shit. Now you work together. Yeah, and now yeah, he's my yeah. co-host. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. That's pretty fucking dope. Right. He's been the co-host for 75 episodes. But, man, we're getting fucked sidetracked. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Look, what I want to know, because you're, you're right. You've been grinding on this shit for a while, man. And that growth, that's that's sincerely a fantastic answer. But, I mean, you've obviously done that a great deal from coming up in New York to signing with Magic Ninja. What was that yeah. just whole process like from, you know, being in the New York scene and then coming and coming over to Magic Ninja? And what are the differences? Because uh, you moved. You relocated, didn't you? Uh, no, I'm still in New York. I'm in New York right now. I'm just oh, always okay. in New York. Okay. Oh, why the fuck I thought you relocated, Lex? It's because you tore too much. Yeah, I mean, I don't really live <laughs> anywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's just, you live out of a fucking suitcase after a while in this fucking industry. I mean, I just, it's more so like I visit home as opposed to live at home. It's always somewhere to go, somewhere to be. But um, going from, I mean, it, I, I hate to sound cliche, but this shit is like a, it's like a dream. You know what I mean? Um, like, I'm one of the only artists on Magic Mission that came straight off of the street, straight, fresh. Never been on tour before. Never been tour support, never open. I never even went to Detroit until he flew me out to Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So it was like from one day to another, everything was totally different. Everybody knows who I am. Everybody wants to know, Everybody wants to take a picture. Everybody wants to get, get things signed. And um, it, it was a shock to me, man. And that's why I am the way that I am with fans and, and other artists. Like, you never know who this person is that you're talking to at this show or on the street corner because that motherfucker might be next. You know what I'm saying? You are a dick to him because you feel like you're in a better position than they are. So you can treat him like shit. Like, I'm not going to name names, but there's several artists out that you already know, not even on Magic Ninja, but that you know in the underground scene that when I was in Nobody, I was trying to get songs with them, and they totally fucking shit all over my face and told me, oh, no, you know, the painted face thing is not going to work. That shit is old. You know, nobody does that anymore. You know what I'm saying? And then I get tired with Magic Ninja and now they want to be my best fucking friend now. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah, it was a man. Lot of, it was a lot of changes, you know? Um, I, I wasn't used to the attention that I got. Um, so I react at first, I would say for the first, you know, little while I, I reacted a little bit. It was it was like rumors, like, oh, you meet Lexi's kind of shy. Like, no, I'm just not used to random people. I mean, I'm from New York City. There's 8 million people here. We just don't walk up to each other and start talking to each other and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's some kind of a robbery or you're about to get killed. So I was looking at it a different way when people were walking up to me at these shows and at these venues coming up to me trying to shake my hand. I'm like, okay, I don't know who the fuck you are, but, you know, we're cool, but, you know, just keep distance. And, I, and as I got into it and learned it, like I learned tour etiquette on tour. Um, I learned about touring on tour. I learned about record sales after getting a record deal. I learned about um, all these different con contracts and promoters. I learned about all that shit on the fucking road. So it was definitely a culture shock. And the difference between um, New York rap and uh, the Juggalo scene, if that's what you're asking, if I'm answering that, that, that question correctly, no, it but answer not. it. Because cause I didn't ask that <laughs> question, Lex, but now I want the fucking answer. Okay. Um, New York doesn't really have much of an underground scene. It does, but most of the people in the underground scene are trying to get to that mainstream scene. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of the shows that you will do in New York City, um, most of the people that's going to be there's going to be probably other rappers waiting, waiting their turn to get on stage. You know what I'm saying? Or they brought 101 motherfuckers with them to see their set, and then they're gone. Um but in the Juggalo scene, like, I love them so much. I love it so much. I love it so much because they loved me first. Like, they embraced me first with, like, open arms. You know what I'm saying? Before all of the bullshit, before all of the other, you know, all of the politics and all that shit, like, these kids showed me hella fucking love everywhere I went immediately. You know what I'm saying? And the loyalty, yeah, yeah. The loyalty of this fan base is incredible. And sometimes I think that it works well, for the fan base, and sometimes I think it, it's counterproductive also, you know, because you have people who are so down and so loyal, but decide to be down and loyal to certain people, or to certain sides, or to certain group. You know what I'm saying? Loyalty is good, just the music. It, can, yeah, it, can yeah. it can definitely be manipulated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the loyalty is incredible. That's why I love them all, man. You know, I, I, I get nothing but fucking love from, from, from everywhere. I mean, you get bullshit from people everywhere, you know what I'm saying? It's been a little shit here and there, but for the most part, 
I would say that this that this genre, this this I don't want to call it a genre. I, I can I when I speak among my personal people, I speak on it more so as a culture. It's a culture. You know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. a music base anymore. It's way bigger than us. It's way bigger than magic than just way bigger than psychopathic. It's a culture now. It's a way of life. You know what I'm saying? And the difference with this culture and the mainstream culture or the other sides of the underground culture is the fact that it's real love for this shit. It's real love for the artist. Except for, some yeah, reason, man. except for some reason, everybody's like, fuck Bulletproof. And I just don't get it. I think that's mean. I, I just I <laughs> with Bulletproof. Everybody's like, fuck Bulletproof in Indiana. I don't get it. Whatever. Yo, Shout out to Spot Vegas. Word up. When I first seen that, right? When I first, I think, I think the first person I seen doing it was Twisted, and they on camera like, yeah, fuck Bulletproof. Nobody told me that that's what they do though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so when it's done, I'm like, yo, what's up? We got beef with these dudes now. What's up with that, man? Like, nah, no, no, no. It's just a thing that he wanted to do. Like, it's just his thing that he does and shit. Those dudes, yo, shout out to Bulletproof and the fool. Those are the <laughs> homies. Word up! Congratulations to my man Keith. Just had his um, kid earlier this year. Shout out to him. Uh, crazy love for those dudes. Indiana always show us love too. Word. Hell yeah, Hell yeah. Man. It's, especially the fool, man. That's my brother for life, man. I love the yeah. fool. Oh, Shout yeah. out to the you fool and everybody, man. You always bring me fireworks and shit when I'm in Indiana. Yeah, he always hooks me up, dog. Always. Man, that motherfucker was scaring the shit out of my dog out of a festival. I had a quarter stick of dynamite and shit. <laughs> Said, I had my dog was freaking the fuck out. Hey, Thanks for, for that, real, fool, by the way. Who's the homie, yeah. man? I mean, much love to him, but for real. Don't, don't, like, can you not set off corner sticks of dynamite around my dog? That's all. Yeah. <laughs> we made, um, I forgot when we was in, in Indiana, man. I forgot the name of that place, but we was behind there one day, man. We actually made the newspaper in that motherfucker, man. First, somebody sent me a new, uh, fucking... Um, an article on their online newspaper for that little town that we was in. I, I believe it might have been Kokomo. Kokomo's in Indiana, right? Yes. Because it wasn't Indianapolis. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. It wasn't Nap Town. But yeah, they're like yeah, unknown fireworks and shit. And we had we had big shit too. Man, we was blowing up a lot of shit. We was blowing up cheeseburgers and shit, <laughs> fucking milkshakes and shit. Like we had a lot of fucking come with those guys. Oh wait. Oh, I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna take a guess and say this is front row live. Possibly, yeah. They got like a, bo- a pool table in the back and shit like that, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, that's front row. Lex blowing, trying to blow up front row. What the fuck is wrong with you, fool? Trying to get like, man. <laughs> Yo, shout yeah. out to that dude. They always take care, but they be bringing us food and shit and drinks. Whenever we got to come out, we can just chill in the green room. It's all love. We can smoke cigarettes and shit. Like they showed us mad love in there, always. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell no, yeah man, man. I know. And you, but I know you, you ain't been doing nothing but grinding like you say. You've been fucking torn your ass off. Like, how many tours yeah. did you do this year? This year I didn't do that many. And, and it's a good thing. I did um, two this year. Is it really? Hell yeah, hell yeah. We did, uh, we did the, 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 the Eat Your Heart Out and we did the murder. But the murder seems like it was a lot of stuff. That shit was like seven, eight weeks. It was a long fucking tour. You know? Um... But yeah, we did. I mean, 2016, we did, I did like at least four. So, but um, it, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good, it's a bad thing because you get used to being out on the road. You know, you get tired of the boringness of being home. Um, but the, uh, it's a good thing is you don't want to oversaturate and and have people seeing you every three months or every four months. Like, oh, I'll go to the next one. Or, oh, I went to the last one. You know, um, you don't want to. You don't want to. Oh, oversell yourself and people start getting fucking tired of you like yeah i see this guy all the fucking time fuck him you know give him the time to get give him a time to miss you a little bit and that's why this um this tour with me and scum and amb that's why this tour i believe this tour is going to be so fucking off the hook man work yeah speaking of last year man it's like last year when you guys when you and scum did the uh merciless assault tour yeah on the first day of san jose i actually performed i actually opened up for you guys on the first show man that was actually my very first show opening up for you man oh wow nice man nice i got there kind of late because my flight got all fucked up but yeah it's a little hectic though, yeah man. yeah it sucks that we it sucks that you and i couldn't be able to talk that much but you know everybody has their own busy schedule but seriously though i remember when you first came out when you first started off dude before you even got signed to m and e my old homie, uh, what was his name? The Unholy Priest. 
He used to do yeah. like beat, uh, beats back on SoundCloud back in the day. He actually showed me a demo of yours when you used to do uh, work with him. You actually did some dope ass shit, man. And it's yeah, crazy yeah, how you got to successful that to, to where you huh. are now, man. For real. Well, his name was Jason Voorhees at one time, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I lost touch with that guy over over time, man. But yeah, he produced fucking bangers, man. Like fucking Green Mile. Shout out to that dude. He did fucking Green Mile. He did Tear It Down and shit like that. Tear It Down. That's one of my best songs I consider to date. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, but, man. We got a couple of joints together. Hard ones, you know. For real though, and now to see you today, now you're working with M and E, and you're working with also with um, Real Wolf Productions, and you got to collaborate with the Flatliners, one of the hardcore legends of the underground. How was that experience working with with uh, Real Wolf and the Flatliners in general, dude? Well, I, I mean, I knew Flatliners before I even got started about the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those been, those been the homies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we was we was always so we we actually have songs together. Me, Flatliners, and Mr. Gray actually have a song together before Ooh. me or Mr. Gray was on Magic Ninja. I don't know when they're going to put that out, but yeah, I've been fucking with Flatliners for, for, for a minute now. They brought me to my first concert, which was a uh, Tech Nine concert in 2015, believe it or not. That was my first concert ever. But, um, we were supposed wait, to. Wait, 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 wait. Lex, that was your first concert, like, you ever attended or performed? In life, yeah. In life. In life. Woo. Oh, oh man, dude, I that was two years, years ago. I never been to a show before. Yeah, 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 exactly. So imagine how imagine how crazy this is for me. I had never been to a concert before. I've been to um, open mics and shit. I mean, if you want to count that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but like real fucking production, and I had never been on a tour bus. Like um, I had knew a guy named Dave Posterius, and he was um, he was Tech Nine's bass player at the time. You know what I'm saying? And um, he brought me up on the bus, and I had met uh, just another fucking guy. And shit. But at the time, I was already talking to Twisted also. That's you why, know? dude, that's why, but Lex, that's why Joker did what he did, because he's just like, I'm a fucking... But then he was... <laughs> <laughs> you know. Hey, but real quick, apparently the, the bombs were in Lafayette, Lex, because I got Toby fucking giving me shit about it. Like, it was in Lafayette. I'm like, my bad. So that's where you were blowing shit up with a fool. That's what Toby said, okay. anyways. Okay. Eh, okay. 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 <laughs> well, yeah, that was my first concert ever, man. Um, Flatliners brought me to that shit. So I got, I got crazy love for those dudes. We're going to have a lot more work coming out in the future also. And this year. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of work with those dudes. And I know, like I said, That's you just up, man. dropped a hell of an album, man, in Beyond Redemption. Uh, we were bumping it right before uh, we went on fucking air and shit. And, man, like... You, in the past, let me see, in the past, I think, what, three years, you have dropped, what, is is it three or four albums and two EPs? Uh, yeah, we did um, two full-length LPs, um, two EPs, and two mixtapes, yep. And we did six projects. Hell yeah, man. How do you yeah. breathe? <laughs> <laughs> what again? I said, how do you breathe? Like between I mean, the torn and that's that? How I breathe, man. That's how I breathe. That's my that's my air. That's my oxygen. I gotta constantly be create. I'm one of those people who have to constantly be busy. I have to be creating something, or else I feel like I'm not doing shit. Just comes confusion and depression and weirdness. And what is my place? What is the meaning of life now if I'm not growing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bringing full circle back to that. Well. Nah, I mean, that, that's what I do, man. That's that, that was my hustle before I was with Magic Ninja. So I'm like, all right, well, I got this shot. I'm getting a little bit of shine now. I don't want to start getting lackadaisical and stuff. I feel like they should do everything for me. You know, I wanna, I'm want i going to keep working like I, don't, like I don't have this deal. Like, like I'm still trying to get it. You know, and they appreciate that shit, you know? And none of it has been whack shit. All of it has been dope shit. And all of it is getting better and better and better as I experience more, you know? Yeah, no. Oh yeah, man. And and this is this isn't me fucking trying to say anything. Just ride your nuts, whatever. Everything I've heard from you, Lex, it's it's fucking it's dope shit, man. Lyrically and everything else. I mean, it's it's on fucking point. I can see, I can see what made Twisted be like, hey, hey, hey. You see that dude over there? Let's sign we gotta him. sign this motherfucker <laughs> to the label, man. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they knew though at first. I don't think they knew. I, 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 I swear, I don't, I don't think so because it, it was kind of coming 
like even having the conversation with George is like, wow, you, 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 we haven't had anybody um, in a long time putting out as much content so fast, you know, at the time. Because in 2016, I think I had put out more, more, more projects than <clears throat> had ever been put out. You know what I'm saying by by Magic Ninja? So they were like, "Oh shit, fuck yeah!" And the fact that they're all selling, also, like you can put out as much shit as you want. If nobody cares, nobody cares. They'll be like, "Yo, listen, don't put out no more shit for a little while because nobody cares. We're wasting fucking money." But every time I came home with a project or idea, y'all want to do this mixtape? All right, cool. And it, and it sells like a fucking crazy. You know, Mr. Ugly One got Fago Lovers album of uh, mixtape of the year. Um, then the EP so like crazy, which is a tour EP, but it's so like crazy. Um, when the album came out. And the album did it did fairly well. You know, um, so I, I think Beyond Redemption, I think that changed the whole game, though, you know? Oh, yeah. That's when it got you that more exposure, if you could say that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And 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 I think I put more into that product than I put into any other product that I put out. Oh, that shit yeah. was like a baby. That shit was like a baby. I put, like, love into that shit. And I didn't make that album... And I think I think that I love it so much, and I think it sounds so good because I wasn't trying to make album of the year. You know, I wasn't trying to make a hit album. I was just trying to get some shit out. You know what I'm saying? Get 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 some get get give them wh- what I really am, who I really am, as opposed to just saying what everybody thinks is cool. You know what I'm saying? That's, that album was a real fucking emotion. That's pure heart in that fucking album. You know. And that's why I was so excited about it before it came out, and I'm still excited about it now. People were still, I haven't heard one naysayer about that album yet. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, we'll see, you know? We got to keep pushing, get those numbers up still. Numbers did yeah. well, free did really well, numbers are still moving pretty well, but, I mean, you can never sell too many records, you know what I'm saying? No, exactly, fuck. exactly, man. Yeah, fuck no. Hey, but uh, to put something else as far as keeping what you personally do, because I think... With what you said, that is the way the greatest music, in my opinion, is created. You, it wasn't created for the masses. It was a dude going, you know, I want to fucking make something. And then he just made something, and everybody was like, damn. Right, right. And, right. and you, you love your music more when, when, it, when it's more organic. And people can tell when it's more organic. People can yeah. tell when it's straight from the heart, as opposed to you just trying to get people to buy your shit by saying a bunch of wild shit. You know what I'm saying? People can tell. And I think that's why the response is so good for this record because I don't know if there's any other record out this year that sounds like that one. I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but it's true. Yeah, He's blowing yeah. his own horn, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. I'll agree. I mean, what if, what I fucking, like I said, I've, I've heard it. It's fucking dope. I'm not going to sit here and disagree with the man. I'll say that much. I know I got Spot Vega, though, Lex. Uh, he wants to specifically know what yeah, he's one of the listeners as well as another artist. You can catch an interview with him if you go into the archives of No Fucks Given Radio, ladies and gentlemen. But he wants to know what what inspired your face paint, man, and specifically the design and everything that you used. That's a whole long, um, a whole long thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, really? Yeah, I don't know <laughs> for that one. You know, um, but. I mean, in a nutshell, it's the ugly, you know. And in, in a nutshell, it's the it's the it's the how I really look, how we wait. all really, look, you know what I'm saying? But it's wait, wait, wait! You said it's a really long story, and you don't have time for it. It's that fucking long, Lex. It's it's it, we. I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a long story short. I'll make a long story short. Um, right. Because it's the meaning. It's not even so much a story, but it's more so the meaning of it. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, I feel that, I mean, especially living in New York City, I don't know if you ever walked through New York City or even driven better yet in New York City. Um, you get a lot of rude people, you know, you get a lot of fucking assholes. Um, and in the world, you get a lot of fucking people that are fucking assholes, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think a lot of people are naturally mean people and they don't want to show it. They, they put on this persona or this facade of this nice person and a lot of people eight fucking seven or eight out of ten people are completely unhappy or even angry people or depressed people so i feel like when i put on that mask i'm more so taking off the mask and showing what i really look like that's why there's a teardrop on one eye it's a painful feeling it's an angry feeling it's a feeling of who we really are when we go home and 
there's nobody around and we're just staring at each other in the mirror and realize how much of a fucked up person we really are. That's what it means. In a nutshell, of course. Oh, yeah, I would man. really, I, I would honestly love to hear the very long, elaborate answer of that just based on what the nutshell of it is. <laughs> oh, you got to wait like, for the book, man. The, we, yeah, yeah, the fuck it. Go for it. Right, no, no, he's got it. He said he's got to write a book. So, you got I mean, to yeah, write a whole book of that shit. <laughs> Damn. Apparently, I'm requesting a book from Lex the Hexmaster. Can you get on that for me, man? Huh? I said I'm requesting a book. Can you get on that for me? I got you, man. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Signed autograph, graphic novel, and all that. <laughs> be like, I'm going to be, be working on it. Be like, oh, damn. Now I gotta fucking find time to read this shit. It's hard to find time to read. Besides time, fuck, it's hard to find time. Period. I know you know that, man. With everything you've got going, though, like I said, you just, uh, you just dropped uh, fucking Beyond Redemption as well as I know. How many tracks are you on on uh, Year of the Sword? Uh, maybe three or four, maybe the most, four or the most. I would say. Hell yeah. Yeah, and if you I mean, can say which one was your favorite track, what will be the top one is your favorite track on that particular project? Um, on the other tour? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, better than ever before, probably. Hell yeah! I really, really like that song. That song was great. Even when I was writing it, you know, and, and when I when I got it, it was just it was just a beat and a chorus, you know. So I knew it was going to be a heavy track. So. Yeah, that's that's that right now is my favorite joint on there. Hey, thank you, Megan, real quick. For the, hell yeah, thank you, Megan, for that. Um, man, Chuckles, I I just feel because he's kind of talking about collabs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we give him that question though? What? What? Why not? All right, Dad. Look, All this right, is so... a standard question, Lex. If, <laughs> you know, and, and no names have to be mentioned before it's even fucking stated. But now that it seems yeah, far more can, terrifying, this is a chuckles. Question go ahead. I always <laughs> get for uh, so many guests. There are some artists that do talk about it, and there's some that don't. But are you ready for this question, brother? Okay. All right. So I know you collaborated with a shitload of people, man. So I was. I'm. I'm curious though. Who are the two artists that you won were honored and blessed to work with in your music? But who were the two other artists that you just deeply fucking regretted working with? Oh, man. Yeah, that's serious right there, man. I, I don't know if I want to answer the second half of that question. I don't need no more of that. You know what I'm saying? You're not uh, the first, Lex. You're not the first to fucking <laughs> the fifth on that. I mean, I've done, I've done some good ones, and I've done some really bad ones. You know what I'm saying? But um, one dude I was happy to fucking dance on the track with was, was the homie Donnie Menace. You know what I'm saying? Oh um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's the homie one, and every time we in Vegas, we fucking chill, and he let me hear new shit. You know what I'm saying? And I fucking I love his fucking style. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's one dude. You know, see, I mean, the crazy part about being an artist, especially being on MNE, is that people don't know that you're still a fan of music. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can have a guy who's like, oh yeah, put you on this kind of pedestal or whatever, but. And you're like totally fucking blown away by that fucking. You know what I'm saying? Um, Donnie is one of them. Um, and I don't know, Jamie Madrox. I don't know. I mean, does he count? Does Jamie count? I mean, I would hope yeah, so. Yeah, he counts. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah, I count yeah. Jamie Madrox personally. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's one if, person. If yeah, you don't want to, Lex, one. I think you need to take that up with him. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> we're on the same label, so it's nothing for me to be like, yo, Jay, can I get a verse? Can I get a hook? And he just jumps on it, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, no, being on songs with dudes like Jamie, Matt, just Twisted in general, you know, being on songs with dudes like that, I mean, you got to bring your A game, so it's always fucking dope doing a verse with them or for them or, you know what I'm saying? You can't be lacking, you know, because you'll get, you'll get aired out and forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Between Paul and Jamie, those are two giants right there. So you got to make sure you come with your shit. And your shit better be in order, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah I can, man. I can fucking believe that shit. Well, I know I've got... Toby wants to know what's a personal favorite song of yours by yours. But I want to know, what's your personal favorite song that you just bumped the shit out of nowadays? 
You can answer both. Okay, my favorite song right now um, is um, It Begins off of Beyond Redemption. Right now. That's what I'm bumping right now. Um, and there's another song. I don't know if you ever heard of Rock Nest Monster from um, Boot Camp, but he got a song called Good Weed, Bitches, and Guns. That's like my anthem right there. If y'all want to bump that, that's some shit. It's still underground, too. Um, Good Weed, Bitches, and Guns. The song is so fucking gangster. Rockness Monster. That's what's up, man. Why the fuck do I feel like I've heard that name, Chuckles? Because you heard of him before. I'm pretty sure you heard of him before. Uh, I can believe it. Oh, yeah. It. He from back in the days, though. He from back in the days. He's from New York. From back in the days. But um, that'd be that'd be a, 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 a dream collab right there, Rockness Monster, because his wordplay is ridiculous. Oh, no? yeah. You know what? I did listen to a couple of strikes before, man. Yeah, that dude was a fucking beast, man, for real. Yeah, he was partners with Sean Price. I know Sean Price, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah him and Sean Price were together. That's, man, that's, I feel like we're all that's fucking up, dating man. ourselves right now. Check him out. Like, at least a little bit. Yeah. Huh? I said, I feel like we're all dating ourselves a little bit. I know. <laughs> yeah, and calling out how fucking old we are. Oh nah, man, nah. These just come from the golden age of hip hop, man. I don't know what these kids are listening to these days. <laughs> I don't no, know. they're I listening to that old guy. That... I hate to say the old guy, but I don't know what these kids. I can't get into the the mumble. Rap. I hate to even mention that stuff, but like the mumble rap and all that. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how they get so into it. I, I, it doesn't touch my spirit, you know. Well, since you yeah, hate man. to get into it, Lex, let's ask all about it, right? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm curious, and this is um, like on two different parts, man, because, I mean, you've seen a lot in the underground, especially here recently. What's your opinion yeah. of what the scene was and what it is, both in the underground and the mainstream in, like, the past decade of change? Because in the past decade, both in the underground and mainstream, holy fucking shit, the scene has changed. It has, it has, it has. Um, I think the underground before, as opposed to now, was uh, the underground before was constantly birthing. It was a place for brand new people to come out. You know what I'm saying? Um, brand new people to come and uh, and and one showcase their talent and another to to make a living. You know, brand new people. You know, um, but now it just seems like the same thing with being recycled all over again. You know what I'm saying? Um. But you got some dudes in the underground right now who, who, given that shot or given that opportunity, would you know change the whole game and just and just keep it progressing as to grow. You know, um, hip hop now, the mainstream world is it's growing. You know, it's changing into something different. I mean, how many of us looked one way as kids, and by the time we're teenagers, we look like completely different people, and by the time we're in our thirties, we look like completely different people. The game has to change. It has to grow. What what is grown into? I'm not going to say I'm a big fan of it. I don't like it at all. But in another five years, it's going to be totally different again. But the only thing oh, is, yeah. the mainstream is constantly pumping out brand new sound. It's constantly pumping out brand new people. So we, even with mumble rap, you're going to have people that are going to, uh, you're going to have people that are going to um, put their little twist on it, put their little twist on it, and then it's going to sound totally different in the next five years. I think that's what the underground needs to do more so. Keep putting those new sounds out. Keep putting those new voices out, those new ideas. And then, you know, the underground will sound different in another five years. And it has to. It can't stay the same. We we, so, we might like the 90s. We might like the 90s. We might like hip-hop. We might like the boom bap days. But it can't be that way, Fab. Yeah, and we'd be stupid for that. thinking it would be that way. We'll be, we'll be stupid for thinking it would be like that, Fab. So let me ask you then. Out of curiosity, I mean, with everything, you've got uh, the Suicide Boys with the style they're doing. You've got Trap coming out. You've got um, straight street hip-hop. You've obviously got the mumble rap taking over in the mainstream. And I think Trap is something that's becoming fairly popular in the under in the underground right now is Trap and Trap Beats. Um, as well as yeah. in the mainstream, that's what fucking half of the mumble rap is, too, is actually Trap Beats. But you yeah, see I mean, it's not going to be underground for much longer, though. Now, what yeah, do you yeah. mean by that? I, I like... Like, because there has to always be an underground Lex, doesn't there? I mean, back in the days, um, hardcore rap music was underground. That was something that was, it was, it was just like um, the underground is now. You know, it was just local people or, or small labels, you know what I'm saying, selling 
five, six, seven, ten thousand records, twenty thousand records, and that was good, you know. Um, but now you got guys that are that are supposed like I mean, can we really consider people like Rich Underground anymore? Uh, Ritz, more to me, he mm. kind of sounds more mainstream to me than underground the, now. The, the sound is one thing, but I mean, as far as him now. Just, yeah, what he does. You know what yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tech, yeah, tech now. filling like, stadiums. It, it, yeah, it, it, I feel you, Lex. Like, you can't, you can't fucking, like, as much as Strange Music is a homegrown fucking independent label that very much started in the underground, uh, Tech Nine ain't fucking underground no more. Which I don't yeah. consider yeah. Tech Nine as underground. I, 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 consider, I consider him as underground. I don't consider him as mainstream. Even though he had a couple tracks on mainstream on on the mainstream side, but most most of the majority is most of his music is mostly we hear is like underground style. Okay, okay, and and I agree hundred percent. But the bar has been raised though. The level of expectation has been raised for the underground. Think about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just being just being hot and being good is one thing, but now, and I don't know if you've noticed also, but you have a lot of underground rappers that are, like you said, the trap music is starting to seep into the underground now. You know what I'm saying? The trap beats are starting to seep into the underground now. Like, it's starting to sound more and more mainstream. And it's so much money in the underground that I wouldn't be surprised in the next two or three years that the corporate assholes, don't decide like, hey, let's pick up one of these guys and make them into a superstar. You know what I'm saying? That becomes the thing now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have juggalo rappers that want to be like um, Little Yachty and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, even the mainstream, <laughs> the whole, the whole, the whole face painting. If you notice, slowly but surely, that's starting to become a thing. Also, it is. Yeah, man. You know, all you made me think was fuck. The mainstream is going to start plucking the underground like WWE does ROH. My head hurts. I mean, the underground, the underground is doing it to itself. Because now because now being underground, it doesn't seem to be good enough anymore. Well, yeah, why people want to step that? up their game up when they got that. I mean, which is fine. I guess it's fine. But like I say, man, it's, it's only a matter of time before it becomes franchised and... Just a slip, just a sticker slapped on it, and just like, hey, this is this is underground. You like it because more and more people are turning away from the mainstream and looking to the underground now for real music, for real talent. But then you got a lot of people in the underground who want to who want to be mainstream, so they start sounding more and more mainstream, so they can get that mainstream attention, and 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 it's gonna collide. And that's why a lot of a lot of the stuff that's going on now, I gotta stop, man, before the whole thing just collapse. You know what I'm saying? Or gotta keep that so, culture mentality. Yeah. Let uh-huh. me just ask you real quick, because I, I, man, you can shoot me for this question. If you want to just tell me to fuck off for this question, Lex, that's fine. But whatever. I feel like you brought it on yourself. <laughs> so you can tell me okay. to fuck off again just for that statement as well. Much love for stopping by the no fucks given hour if you hang up after I ask this. <laughs> um, but you say the situation needs to change. What do you think can be done to make it to where it is more positive and motherfuckers do come together to to make it to where I mean you can not necessarily achieve a mainstream status but show everybody that what you're presented by the mainstream media is by far not your only option musically there's there's a shitload of oh. I don't know. Rephrase the question. I, I, I didn't even get the oh, end. Of fair it. enough. Fair enough. No. What, like, how do you, how do you, like, how do you correct the situation and show that to people and make it to where there's not a separation. It's more of a unification. Uh, I, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Good. Good question. Good question. Um, I think that um, it's up to the fans. I think the fans should support their local artists more. You know what I'm saying? These small tours more. You know. Um, the, the, the up and coming guys, you know, what you got, like the way people used to have like whole cities behind them. You know what I'm saying? Like this guy's from Vegas. So all of Vegas is going to fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? But now you go to Vegas, you got this faction, you got that faction, you got this faction. You know what I'm saying? Or just supporting the underground artists, whether they're supposed to, supposed to be bigger or smaller. Just, I think it's up to the fans to just keep it going and not just like 
getting caught up in the factions, like, oh, no, nah, I'm fucking with these guys, or I'm fucking with those guys. Like, I don't like those guys, so we're not going to support them. That's what's collapsing. The infrastructure is collapsing because the fans are starting to separate, not even so much the artists or the labels. You know what I'm saying? If the fans are like, yo, listen, man, this is ours. This is, these are our artists. These are our guys. We don't want you guys touching our guys. We don't want you guys coming and plucking our underground artists and taking them and making them something that, we're, that they're not. So we're going to support them, and we're going to keep them right here with us so we can keep this family mentality going, as opposed to pushing people out. Because, honestly, people get turned on by beefs and all that shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Even artists are like, yo, you know, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? So if, if, if people can support their local artists and their local labels and their underground labels more so and forget about the BS, because it's not no personal drama between anybody as far as fans are concerned. Um, I think it will be better, and 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 they can they can they, they they can see their underground grow, and they'll continue to birth more artists and more up and coming dudes and female rappers and all that stuff. And it's a place. It's plenty of money for everybody to make. You know what I'm saying? And it's plenty. And it's plenty of places for people to play. It's plenty of fans for people to adopt. You know what I'm saying? I think that's. I think that would be the remedy for all of this. If fans would just continue to support their local artists, even if it's just a show going on in your neighborhood, and you don't know who these guys are, go check them out. You might like them. You know what I'm saying? You might yeah. think they're dope. They might be yeah. the next left. They might be yeah. the next Twisted. They might be the next ITP. You know what I'm saying? They might be the next Tech Nine. But they'll never be that without you guys. They'll never be that without the fans supporting them. So support your local guys, man, even if you consider them nobody. Support your local labels, even if you consider them to be nobody. Because the fans is what's going to keep this engine running. That's what I think is going to fix this. Yeah, because the yeah. majority of the fans, man, they're they're true family, man. They're the ones that help you get get to where you are today, man. Because if it wasn't for them, man, we wouldn't be nobody to this day, man, for real. Yeah. Much love to everybody who supports our music, man. 100%. And, I, and, yo, that's why I always shout them out and I always show them one love. You know what I'm saying? One family. This is what, this is what, because without the man, without the fans, we all going for, man. We all going for. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, and you're totally right, man. I agree. But fucking, I hope you I know eat, what it is? I hope I your question sufficiently. Oh, no. No, no yeah. dude, you're no. good, bro, that way. You're good, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is, man. I think you did, right? But I'm going to answer just a little bit further, because what I think it is, is for real, all them fans need to get together, you vibe to it, then just dance for eternity. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Dance for Eternity by Lex the Hexmaster. We'll be right back. Hell except yeah. For, except for Facebook. Facebook. Uh, man, go to No Fucks Given Radio. Listen to some dope shit. Like I said, because there's like 200 plus artists in rotation. We just going to bump Lex right now, though, because, you know, we on that Lex the Hexmaster. Motherfucking him and he's shit. Yeah. But you check out the regular rotation. Check out all kinds of shit. But for right now, you just going to check out Silence, y'all. I'm sorry. Much love. Yeah, I'll be enjoying his fish tacos. <laughs>
We're gonna, yeah, look, look, guys, Facebook, like, back, right? Not on the radio, though. If you're over on the radio, um, you're motherfucking hearing offbeat, yeah, by our guest, Lexa Hexmaster. But we're gonna be live on the radio in, like, because, I mean, if you're listening to offbeat, you're listening to, like, the last couple seconds. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and that's, like, that's, like, fucking it. So, but right now, maybe, kind of, go, yeah, yeah. On the No Fucks Given Radio, ladies and gentlemen, and we're live, and I am the Unknown Factor. That's right. This is the 200th episode of the No Fucks Given Hour. So I got to have Chuckles with me. He's the only host that could deal with me in any kind of length, like, at all. Isn't that surprising? <laughs> and that, that I could find a co-host that could deal with me at any kind of length at all? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we've but got that's our besides the point. This, this, this ain't about me. This is about the homie Lex the Hexmaster, man. That's what I was going to, man. Lex the Hexmaster's still in the house. We've been diving into all kinds of shit, like I said. Um, I want to know, man, like I said, you can win in this Beyond Redemption. You said the process of that. Like, you said it was way more personal. So I'm curious, in the process of making that, as opposed to the other five projects you put out, damn, um, that's... Shit, that's a lot, Lex. It's still like, fuck. Um, what was the man. difference in making those projects? Um, I was really, I mean, in putting the mixtape together, those was just like, it was just an idea that I came up with because we had to, we had started doing like the videos, like the um the in the in the, the jam session videos in the studio and stuff like that, and it was just, I mean, people people took to them, people hit to them so hard, you know. That um, we was like, yo, we should just put together a mixtape and see how it does, you know. So we rushed. We did Mr. Ugly one in like two weeks, and we wanted to get it in, in time for the gathering, which is my first gathering I've ever been to. It was fucking blast. <laughs> didn't smoke, didn't drink, but I had to fucking tell my life. So, but um, no, uh, we um, yeah. So that that's that's how we end up putting that one out. Um, Black season was. Black Season was going to be, a lot. Of, a couple of those songs was going to be on contact at first. You know what I'm saying? Even though they're so far apart, a lot of those was going to be on contact at first. But uh, we was like, yo, you're getting ready to go on your first tour. You know, you need something to put out. So we put that one together, like, real quick. Um, because I'm, I'm, I always have, like, a stockade of music. I always have, like, a weapon stash of music. So I can, just, I can put out something else tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I always have enough music. But Beyond Redemption, every song that I did for that album was for that album. You know what I'm saying? There was no other tracks that we just took and put on there. Like, that album was, was, was made, tracked out, everything. The way it's supposed to sound is the way that it was put together, 100%. So that's why that album was so much more personal, because I wanted to get a message across. I wanted to create an atmosphere. I wanted to make a person feel a certain kind of way. I wanted, them to, I wanted to bring people into that mood that I was in while making that album. And I think that people, I think that people got it. I think they got it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up. Now, <laughs> I'm curious then to you then there, I mean, it had to be different because when you're going into like making Black Season, I mean, you're putting it together, but then like you said, you have just tracks that are grabbed from a reservoir that you have of just you make too much music. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, was it, I mean, was it just a different, was like, you feel like it was more personal because of the way you laid it out? Like, I mean, because did you go in like? Did you write the first track and then the second track, or how did the, like? How did you go about laying that out like that then? Especially based on how the all your other projects were laid out so much differently. I mean, um, I would hear, I would hear, I would hear, I would hear certain beats. I would be in the studio. A lot of those songs were done on the spot. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those songs was done purely off the vibe. Like I didn't even write them down on paper, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them, like, broken. I just went in the booth and just did that, and we built up and put it together. Um, the song, Beyond Redemption, I just did that. You know what I'm saying? I just went in there and just, and just let it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of those songs were like that. Some songs, like the song, It Begins. I wrote that song. It took, like, two days to write that song because it was so intricate. It was a story, you know, um, and I went to capture every mood, every emotion, you know what I'm saying, uh, of the beat, you know, put it together, everything, the mix, the sound effects, all that stuff. Um, so I didn't do it in a particular order, but I did do the songs that I wanted to do. I, I, I knew at one point this album is complete, as opposed to when we were doing Contact. Like, 
they literally were like, all right, that's enough. You have enough songs. This is the album. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fine. But Beyond Redemption, it was just like, this is, this is it. I knew it. Like, we just, we, we got a masterpiece in, you know? So wait, I got to uh, know. You were, you were told with contact, this is enough. We don't need any more. How many more tracks were you planning on putting on it, Lex? Um, I would have just kept going, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would have just kept going. <laughs> I can do a song right now, right? And it's the dopest song in the world. Like, I love it. It's the best song I ever did in my life. But then the next song I do tomorrow, I'm like, oh, this is the best song I ever did in my life. That other song was scrap and I don't want to use it. You know what I'm saying? And it constantly goes on. This is how I end up accumulating music over such a short period of time because it's old to me, but it's not old to you. You know what I'm saying? It's new to you, but to me, it's old. I don't want to use it anymore. It's whack. Forget about it. You know? Um, and then the, that's how it was going down. That's how it was happening. Like, nah, we have to use this. is a good song. Let's use that song. Okay, cool. We are redemption. I didn't leave any margin for error. I was just like, yo, we're going to use this. this. This is what it is. This is what it is. There was no songs cut from Beyond Redemption. There's no leftover tracks from Beyond Redemption. Every song that was done was done for that album. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And Hell Lando, yeah, I'll fucking get it to you. I did space it. Whatever. You're giving me shit. Fucking. I'm just. Can I. Hey, man. Can I have somebody review your album for NFGR? Lex, you mind? Oh, no. That's fine. All right. Lando, there's your first assignment. Get Beyond Redemption and fucking review it. Don't touch the one you did with the actual. Yeah. There you go. He, he's asking for fucking. People fuck with me. Man. What are you going to do? Yeah. Hey, let me know what you guys think. I mean, be, and, and, and be honest. You know, if, if you don't like it, you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? If you love it, you love it. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those people that wants to just, you know, yes, say it, yes, men around me. That's why I, I never kept those people around me. That's why I constantly progress in music. I don't like people that just tells me everything I do is good, everything I do is dope. I, I'm not going to trust you. I don't trust people like that. You know what I'm saying? Because while you're sitting here telling me, you're pumping me up. We in the studio, you're pumping me up, telling me how great I am. I get out there on stage and people's laughing at me and shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those dudes that would try to be nice to you because you're homies, but in their in their mind, they say, okay, this is kind of not good. Yeah, like, be real with your shit, you know? And I get, into, I get into it with so many people because people always have a thing about asking me my opinion. Well, what do you think? And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. You know, I just kind of... You know. It's like it's my shit, motherfucker. I don't want my opinion. They want me to. They want me to. Their opinion on. They want my opinion on their music. You know, sometimes if they could be a song I don't like. Some people can't take that though. Some people can't take that. Now you're a hater. Now you're just mad. Now you're this. And now you're that. Because your song. Because your song is corny. I'm a hater. Come on, dog. Be serious. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. Hey, but I want to think. I want to take this back. You said. With the whole process of this, you're like, you just do tracks and they're old to you. So obviously in contract, I mean, you're bringing up old tracks. So when you go on tour, man, how do you go about selecting the tracks that you're going to do on tour? I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. It's, some of it is breath control. Do we want to slow it down? You know, you don't want to constantly be hyped on stage and burn yourself out. Like, you don't want to start... You don't want to start a set with a song like Bomb on it. That has so much energy you have to put into the song, you know. Um, and by the middle of your set, you're completely dead and you're just like walking around. I know you see people that that happens to like by the middle of their set, just walking around on stage and they're about to fucking die, you know. Um, so I track it out energy wise. I try to build up the energy to a climax and then bang, hit them with the banger and it's over. Everybody goes home happy. You know what I'm saying? Like a second. Uh, you oh, ever yeah. consider unburdening yourself of that fucking hoodie you wear on stage? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I started taking off the hoodie, man. You know what I'm saying? First time I ever took off my hoodie on stage was in Albuquerque. Because the, Albuquerque, Albuquerque, yeah. the altitude started getting to me, and I literally was on stage, like, blacking out. Ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah, because you're in Albuquerque. That's a desert fucking state, when a Ooh. desert city, when you think about it. <laughs> the elevation in Albuquerque, I think it's like more than Denver. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So I actually took my hoodie off, and it felt great. You know what I'm saying? And I started doing it more and more often. And, you know, I started liking it. So I was like, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, man, I always, every time I've seen you perform with that, Lex, I swear, I just, 
I, as someone that performs as well, and if, if anybody was ever like, you got to wear a hoodie on stage, I'd look at them, and I'd probably smack them in the face and walk away. I really, because I know I would die. I, I would I mean, fucking die. I would like fade the fact that I would die. Once that before, it's, it's crazy. It's, you would be burning up. <laughs> If you're trying to lose weight, man, it's a good way to lose weight. Trust me. But, you will sweat it out. <laughs> you sweat it out. Yeah, you know, I'd lose weight through death. I'm not trying to lose weight that much, Lex. Thanks, though. So all you big performers, who are, those are big bone. You want to lose weight, wear a fucking hoodie on stage, and you, you'll be burning so many calories. You, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chuckle, y'all motherfuckers is trying to cause a bunch of heart, aggra- uh, fucking heart attacks in the underground on stage. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you know what? You'll be surprised what your body is capable of. After three or four times performing that way, you'll be so used to it you wouldn't even realize that you have it on. That is true. Until you get into fucking New Mexico and realize, oh God, I'm high up. And you're like 3,500 feet above sea level and you just die and shit. I think it's like, I, I don't know. I, don't even think, I think it's more than that, man. Find out how much is the, the altitude of Albuquerque. How high you are above sea level. That's the question I want to ask the people. What's the what's the elevation, elevation of Albuquerque? Albuquerque? You find that out. Find that out. Somebody answer or somebody answer. It's pretty what's, hot. What's the ele- <laughs> My wife's searching. Can can anybody answer before? Oh damn! No, the wife was quick on it. Five thousand three hundred and twelve feet. God okay, damn. New York is thirty feet above sea level. <laughs> <laughs> so, See? So you can Look. do the math on that. You know what I'm saying? That's why well, crazy, Scum's that's got that unfair advantage. Place. Living in fucking Denver and shit, all high up. Right. That's, I know. I, that's an unfair advantage, man. Now, I know fucking what you, it's, uh... Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, Scum, and A and B, correct? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. I was like, I was like, it's someone from LSP. It's Scum, right? It's Scum, it's Scum, right? yeah. My, my brain was fucking hurting on that one, Lex. Sorry. For real. Uh, we yeah, look forward to going to that tour, man, because that's a hell of a tour. I would say. I said, what do you look forward to going into that tour? Because that's a hell of a tour, man. Like, that's some be- real underground talent, if you ask me right there. Yeah, it's going it's to be hella fun, man. It's gonna, that, yeah, that's what I know. It's going to be hella fun. Yeah, I know I definitely, you'll see me at one of them. I swear. I don't know where. Maybe Kokomo. Maybe okay. Kokomo. Maybe fucking... Carl's because I just talked to Davis. Apparently, he's got some shit lined up. So yeah, we'll, we'll. But you will definitely catch us at one of those shows. For anybody out there watching, I definitely recommend going and catching that because the fuck the first time I seen A and B was when they were announced and as psychopathic and they went on tour and they put on a dope fucking show. I know Lex does. I've opened for him recently and fucking I know Scum does because same case. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I know you're gonna be out back drinking Jaeger with Scum too, aren't you? Yeah, you already know, man. Scum, scum, keep my fucking drunk, man. You know. I mean, oh. before he even gets on stage, he shares everybody with some Jaeger shots before he gets on stage and everything. Keep right. it energized like an energy drink. <laughs> oh yeah. Now I'm curious, dude. Do you do you drink at all before you get on stage ever? Nah, not really. Uh, that fucks me up, Lex. I'm not gonna lie. Why is that? That's why. Because, because. Look, man, I am an unstable individual, period, Lex. That's just the way. If y'all see me sober as fuck, y'all can see me 100% sober walking around and be like, Factor's drunk. No, I just don't know how to motherfuck walk right. That's the motherfucking right. truth of it. It's not a lie. Right. right. So, yeah, I get a couple drinks in me. I unstable a little bit more. Hey, do, 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 do you ever get to the point where you're sweating when you're drinking? You say twerking? Well, you're performing on stage, yeah, I, I have been that before. Right, just it was general, like, just in general, like would you sweat when you drink? No, I don't sweat at all. No, uh, no, man, I don't. Well, some people tend to sweat or get hot when they drink or get warmer. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, so, uh, yeah. When I'm on stage, that's that's the reason I don't. That's what it is. If I have any kind of drink, like I'll get hot on stage naturally. But if I've had any kind of drink, it, like, increases it tenfold and makes it to where... I, that's why I fucking... I bring up the hoodie, Lex. Because, look, like I said, if I wore a hoodie on stage, I would sincerely expect to die. I... I, mean, that's exactly. I mean, imagine, 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 imagine drinking and then going on stage with a hoodie on. You're going to fucking die. 
Oh yeah, I know. Just yeah. drinking, going on stage with a fucking t-shirt on, I about died. I fucking only imagine with a hoodie what it would have been. Last right. time I got drunk on stage was uh, at Brother and Chong show last year, and <laughs> I feel like I was gonna die of thirst because my whole throat was so dry. It's like I thought I was gonna fucking chuck my own dried spit. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, the first, first, one, one, of the, one of the first and only times I went on stage drunk was, was, of course, at the Roxy. You know what I'm saying? With scum. So, with the Roxy, oh, shoot, that's right. They make sure we always stumble out of that motherfucking end of the night. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Roxy in Denver. If you if you want to come play a dope-ass club, go to the Roxy. Or check scum out. He'll keep up. Hell yeah. And shout out to scum, man. Hell if you yeah, want to keep up on all things LSP, check out Talk Snuff with Team Snuff, hosted by Lynch. Yeah, right over there. They fucking monthly on what the just uh I don't have my calendar in fuck in front of me, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, it's once a month on No Fucks Given Radio with Lynch. He'll fucking keep you updated on shit. That's what the fuck he does. Um over there on Talk Snuff, yeah. But I think Lynch's gonna be out there with us too, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Lynch I know Lynch is gonna be out on that tour, man. He actually is uh discussed with me about doing a couple shows from the tour. Because uh, he actually did that with the Insane Assassination Tour. He was just out on doing a couple shows from tour. But speaking of tours, Lex, I'm curious. What's the most fucking just nutty-ass shit you've ever ran across while you're out on tour? Oh, man. I, I can't even I can't even fucking explain it, man. It's just, it's, it's been so much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I've, seen some, I've seen some crazy stuff. I mean... My first tour, everything was crazy because it was like everything was brand new. You know, you could only be new once. You know, you could only go to a, a city for the first time once. So everything was crazy. Everything was amazing. Everything was crazy. Um, but, yo, I can't even think of it right now because you just you see some crazy fucking people, man, some crazy things. I mean, some people weird you out. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is one guy who's just, I, I swear I've seen this guy in Seattle. And then the next day I've seen him in, like, um, like Tennessee or something, and then I see him again like a week later in like New York. Like the dude's like everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who he's coming to see. And he's weird too. He doesn't actually say anything to anybody. He just kind of comes around and just like looks from a distance. I don't know if he's coming to kill somebody or what. But I'll be watching out for that. So, that hey, motherfucker, that. are you following me? Are you <laughs> state to state? What the fuck? It might be the police, bro. What? Yeah, stalkers are fucking crazy, yo. But what is like, what is the most craziest shit you ever see a fan do at one of your shows? Like the most memorable, crazy, fucked up shit you've seen a fan do at your show? Well, I seen. I was in. I was in. I think it was, I believe it was Pop in um, Sawyer, Illinois, and I seen a dude crowd surf in a wheelchair, and he was still <laughs> in the wheelchair. Also, crowd surfing. He was dope. People should be like that guy. Wheelchair people should be like that guy. That guy was dope. Word. Hell yeah. <laughs> Man, can I yeah. just say, I'd be kind of, awesome. like, I'd be kind of afraid to be, like, having that motherfucker passed over my head, because if one person doesn't catch the weight properly, and that comes down, that's not right. Right. a person. Yeah. That's not a person. Yo, that's where the love comes. That's when you That's when you know you got one of those shows where it's just live, and just everybody's on the same page, and there's no bullshit, and there's no hand, you know what I'm saying? It's just fun. And it was so ill, you know, I had to shout him out, like, oh, check out my man. Like, he was the dopest, you know what I'm saying? Crowd surfing on stage. I've seen people get their, I've seen people get teeth knocked out while I was doing bomb on them before. Bomb on them is a fight song. I've seen so many fights happen during that song. So many. No, no. Oh, the other story is so much better, Lex, because you're right. That is, if if you can get a dude in a wheelchair crowd surfing, there is unity amongst the crowd, right? 100%. Yeah, because that's a fucking accomplishment, and it took a good deal of you to make sure it happened and the rest of you to make sure no one died. <laughs> you got to wait a heavy that wheelchair You got to wait a man, and you got to wait a wheelchair, so that, that, that's pretty dope. I've never yeah. seen that. Like That was one of the illest. It's those things. It's those dope things that I see, you know what I'm saying, that, that I really, that really is like, yo, this is fucking ill. You know what I'm saying? Just fucking man, you know, Lex, I heard you like weird questions, right? Uh, depends on how weird you're gonna get, bro. I mean, all right. Well, well, let's see. Oh, let's see. Let's shit. see if we get too weird for you. Then chuckles make it awkward. 
All right, inches. this is the ep- all right, this is the part where we get hella awkward. Yeah. So okay. we're gonna give you a we're gonna give you we're gonna give we're gonna give you two superpowers, right? But you only have to choose one, and it's okay. awkward as shit. So it might make you cringe, but here it goes. So if you had a superpower, would you one rather piss out fire or would you rather shit out a shit demon like the movie Dogma? I already shit shit demons, dog, so you ain't got to tell me nothing about that. <laughs> ask me on tour. Ask me how many, ask me how many hot bags I don't do out of the highway, motherfucker. Ask them. <laughs> oh That's a first, God. Lex. That's a first. So no one's know. ever claimed on already having one of those two superpowers. I already got it, dog. But if you had a shit demon that actually came to life, what abilities would you tell it to do, though? Um... I don't know. He'd be a serial hugger. How about that? He'd just hug everybody. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be the guy that gets over. He'd be the guy that gets drunk and gets overly affectionate to everybody and just like keeps rubbing your shoulder and shit. He's just fucking rubbing your arm. You know? Like, oh, you made out of shit, dog. Nobody wants to touch you. Know? <laughs> the piece of the serial shit over your shoulder is like, dude, why do you stink like shit? Look through to the right. shoulder. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's what he'd do, man. <laughs> that. Everybody. That's what he'd do. Might have to burn that T-shirt after the end of the show. <laughs> that's really, 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 really disgusting. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Disgusted by Lex the Hexmaster, featuring Twisted. We'll be right back, y'all. You know what's not disgusting? These fish tacos. Yeah. But, hey, man, right. you keep bringing up fish tacos. I already got Lando fucking fish tag, or hashtag of fucking fish tacos <laughs> and shit. All right? Fucking crazy ass Lando. We'll be right back, Facebook.
right? But we're back live on Facebook. And I just want to say, if you've got the clap, let a motherfucker know before you fuck them. But that's all I'm right. saying, right? <laughs> you know, well, hold on one sec, right? If you're over on uh, No Fucks Given Radio, just heard in a, hearing a super or a commercial for Super Nerd Nintendo. Yeah, that show hosted by myself and the Smash Bros, Racer XX Cash and Mr. DKB. You know, got uh, who the fuck we got coming up? Um, I'm not sure his name, but the guy that like wrote Underdog. He's writing Underdog currently, either that or drawing. And Race is gonna be like, "You're a fucking asshole, Factor. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you." I'm gonna be like. My bad, bro. I'll do way more research before the show. That's not for a while. This is Lex the Hexmaster. But we're not on the radio quite yet, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a couple more seconds. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to ramble on endlessly like a dick. Nah, maybe not, ladies and gentlemen, because we're live. No fuck skipping radio, and I am your host, The Unknown Factor. Still got that headhunter with me? Hell yeah. Man, we get a headhunt Lex the Hexmaster here in a minute. Unless he oh, just yeah, went up, because I just said, Lee, get a, we get a head hunt, Lex the Hexmaster here. He's like, fuck this, I'm done. <laughs> oh, no, I'm up in here. I'm up in here. I'm chilling. Yeah. We, got, we got a caller. Oh, got a caller. Oh, oh. I, was, I was getting ready to say, before before this motherfucker so rudely interrupted me by calling in, because I believe that's Spot Vega. <laughs> yeah, like I said, before this motherfucker so rudely interrupted me by calling in, I was going to say, if you want to call in with a question to Lex the Hexmaster right now, just give us a call at 765-400-0511. But Spotty, what's hoodie? You got a question for Lex? Uh, actually, I do, man. Uh, it's more or less a comment rather than that. Um, the face paint thing. I like your idea. That is what's up. I usually try to strive for that with my name, which is an abbreviation of split personality over time, S-T-O-T. Um, I used to rock the face paint as an alternate persona, but to be honest, I think people need to see the real me. You know what I mean? And the way you describe your face paint, I'm digging that shit. That's what's up. Like, real talk. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, bro. Not a problem, right? Eh? Hell Yeah. That wasn't a question, though, Spot. Um, okay. Who would you like to collab with that is a major artist? What do you consider major? Uh, well, m and up there. Uh, other than m and &E, what, what label would you want to collab with? Strange, <sighs> psychopathic, or anything like that? Um... I don't know. I never. I don't. I never really put much thought into it. Um, I don't know. Can I, I guess, say um, personally, Lex, I'd love to see you work with pretty much all of Strange Music. Yeah, definitely. I like that. It'll be. It'll be a thing. It'll, be, it'll definitely be dope. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, but I don't know. I don't know because there's a lot of chopper rappers out there. You know, I don't really do that that much though. So. Well, you ain't even really got to be a chopper to have lyricism, bro. I mean, come on now. Uh, how about anybody from, say, uh, Brain Sick Music? Brain Sick oh, Music? Oh, Yeah, Twisted, Twisted Insane, Insane and King, King Iso, Iso and uh, Dick Oles. Oh, Dick Oles, Z, Fire Squad. Oh, so you're talking about just underground dudes, right? Yeah, I would definitely do um, Twisted Insane would probably be dope. Um Never do that's a monster. Playboy the Beast is a monster. Fuck yeah, um, that's my nigga, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a beast, you know what I'm saying? He's a Playboy is a fucking beast. You know what I'm saying? That ain't um, no shit. He's been a beast for the past six, seven years, man. Straight the fuck up. And that's, that's this is during about, sick fuck era. This is what I'm saying. Like, there's so many dudes out here, man, that got bars, man, and got ideas, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, those be the guys that I be really wanting to do the collabs with, man. You know what See, I'm saying? Me, I've actually taken kind of like a two and a half year hiatus off of my music, so that way I can actually have time to concentrate, write, put out the right shit like I need to. Kind of like how you took your time with the last album, Redemption. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's but whatever, time, Lex, he can it. no. Rush, I mean, oh hell rush no, it. never rush it. Hey, never no, no, rush no, it. wait, wait, Stop wait, okay. Spot, hold on, hold on, Lex, no, he can fuck off, and Lex, let me tell you why. Because I got a collab <laughs> to you, what, a fucking year ago? More? Yeah, exactly a year. 
Say what? But you do it know is that not I've been exactly in and out of fucking. Since you I got, do know I've I got been this fucker like a not. verse or a hook like a fucking year ago, apparently to the day according to Spot, and he still ain't released well, that do. shit. Yeah, because I've been in and out of the fucking nut ward, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, man. Well, when you got depression, you got horrible anger and rage issues, along with fucking psychotic features and bipolar one and two, you're a little screwed up in the brain, bro. All right, fucker. How about some dope ass questions? You got any more? Uh, with the whole sadness, depression, and whatnot, how does that affect you on a day to day basis, boss? I mean, um, like I said, man, I have to constantly create, man. That's my, that's my, that's my avenue. That's my venting. You know, um, if if it's, I mean, some people draw, some people, some people paint. You know, what I'm saying pictures. Like artist doesn't necessarily just mean musician. You know, artist is a person who, who's hey, finding definitely. A, an artist is finding is a person who's finding an alternate way of expressing themselves, and that's why I can come up with so much music because I'm going through a lot of the same things that you guys. I mean, you can hear the song broken. I, I'm going through a lot of the same things that you guys are going through just because I'm with my knee or and I'm so-called big rapper and all that stuff like that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not going through the same day-to-day struggles that you guys are going New through. New person just like anybody else. Right, and I wake up with the same bullshit in the morning just like you do. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I yeah. Just, music is just my way of expressing myself. You know what I'm saying? You may not know my story. I might have went through a lot of the same things that, you, that you're going through right now and still going Definitely. through them. You just got to grow, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? You have yeah, to yeah. grow. You just have to Find a way to let that out, man, because you know what? If you keep it inside, it's just going to become poison and it's going to kill you. Yeah, that ain't no exactly. shit. Man, damn it. Why do they always give me perfect segues, Chuckles? Because I always come up with the good questions, man. Is this motherfucker <laughs> driving around on a Segway? Are you Paul Blart in it? Shut the fuck up, Scott. <laughs> fucking... I'm sorry you don't know what a Segway is. Chuckles knows what I'm talking about. I do. About. It's one Dude, of those fancy she... things with the handles that you lean forward and it goes forward, you know, like Paul Blart, the mall cop. Yeah, yeah. And, babe, you're not funny. helping. Come on now. Y'all think I'm that fucking stupid, bro? Come on. <laughs> Lex, help me. I don't know what's going on. Look, look, Chuckles. What up? Chuckles. Should we what up? do it? Are you ready for this? All right. I don't know. Should we? Are, are you ready for this, though? The wife nodded yes. So, before we do this, real quick, Lex, thank you for stopping by, man. It's been a fucking pleasure. All right, got one more thing we want to get to. But before we do that, is there anything we've missed you want to go in-depth to? Um, Just everybody in every city, man, again, support your local guys, support your local artists. Um, come on out to that... Um, that new tour that me, um, Scum, and AMB is coming out to, uh, because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be real personal. We're going to come out and kick it with the people, like always. Um, shout out to East Coast. Shout out to the whole Shadow Army. Everybody out there putting in that work. Everybody out there kicking some ass. Shout out to everybody out there that's in, in, in the whole country. You know what I'm saying? That, that's supporting Lex and supporting what I'm doing and supporting this new movement. This year, I got some brand new stuff coming out. Possibly going to be putting out some new artists myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to be launching a whole bunch of new stuff. And just stay tuned, man, because y'all going to be afraid of what I'm going to do next. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I ain't scared of nothing. I just can't wait for it to come forth, bro. About to happen. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So definitely, go pick up Beyond Redemption, ladies and gentlemen, as well as Year of the Sword. I suggest getting a physical copy. I'm going to do that because I want the fucking bonus disc, right? But Lex stopped by the No Fucks Given Hour, and it is the No Fucks Given Hour. So Lex, that means I got to ship you off, got a box for you. and You know, I've met you, bro. I know oh, just shit, the you're putting them in box the box. Made. That's fucked up. Right? Hey! Dad, oh, don't tell him none. Don't, don't tell him don't, none. You fuck. Don't tell him none. I will hang up on your ass. You start giving away fucking shit. I will hang up on you so quick. Don't fuck point. around, Spot. Right? I'm shipping you off, though, Lex. Point. Right? But tis the season, you know, of that jolly fat fuck. Right? Mm-hmm. So this island, well, it is only <laughs> 10 by 10. It's got a little Charlie Brown Christmas tree with it. Right? With one little ornament up top. Lex, nice. you may or may not want to fuck with his tree. I'm just saying. Right? right. And then there's the one. Huh? Chopping down and smoke that shit. 
Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you better. <laughs> it's it's Lex. It's not smokable. I promise, dude. Oh, I promise. that's scandalous. It's not. Hey, Everything look. burns in a certain heat, man. Everything burns in a certain heat. I didn't say All this part of the show is nice. That fall shit. Hey, what? This part, this part of the show is the mean F-A-W, part of the show, Lex. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, hey, no, no, no. No case for me, man. Spot. Stop <laughs> oh, fucking. No. So, so, like I said, you're on the island, 10 by 10. You got a Christmas tree in the middle, right? Fucking Charlie Brown style. You got one ornament on it. There ain't shit on that tree to smoke even if it was fucking herb. I'm sorry, Lex. <laughs> I love you, but that's just the way this shit goes. And then there's the water. Chuckles? Tell them about the water. Oh God, yeah. You don't want to go in the water, dog. You you want to know what you want to know what's in the water? What's in the water? We got them motherfucking gremlins over in that motherfucking water. Yeah. So Factor gave them a shitload of fried chicken, right? So they can turn into gremlins, and you just toss them motherfuckers in the water. So there's like a a billion gremlins. They're just calling for your name, dude. So I advise you if you even put your toe in it. They're just automatically going to snatch you right in. So I advise you stay away from the water. Fucking see it burning. Now, hey, just so you know, Lex, if you ever want to head towards the water, it is a viable option that is there for you, for your own mental protection, I guess would say. You know? All right. But we're not just going to leave you completely isolated, man. I'm going to drop a big-ass projection screen out of the middle of the sky that you just have to watch. Because you just... Don't have a choice. But I'm going to give you a couple different options as far as what to watch. You do have to choose one, though. Chuckles. Okay. What are his options? Okay. So, the first option is you get to see, I quote, with your own eyes, you get to see Chanel West Coast give a homeless guy dressed up as a Santa Claus a blumpkin, and all you hear is his diarrhea Ooh. just dripping down the toilet. That's your first option. Oh, Second wow. option Second option, you get to see Santa Claus give birth for the very first time. Not Mrs. Santa, but Mr. Santa. Yeah. Okay. And the third option? Back there, you want to give him that third option? No, because my wife left the room and I don't have the fucking card that has the shit written down on it. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you have to call me out on that, you dick? That's why I handed it over to you. You prepared. Damn, man. Hey, she left at very much the wrong time. And that's our fault, how? Damn, Chuckles, he calls you on that one. Give him his third option. <laughs> uh, third option is you get to see. Oh, shit. What should I give him the option? So, third option is you get to see. What, Who the fuck's account? getting a Facebook call? Yeah, you should hear that shit. Lex? No, sorry. Yeah, I'm here. All right, well, that was Spot right. apparently getting a Facebook call. That's why he's not here any longer. Give him his third That's option, weird. Chuckles. Santa get the All right, third option is you get to see the trailer of Drummer Boy. All you hear is that rumba bump bump sound all the time. That's just your repeat. No other else trailers but that. So those are your third options. Uh, I watch Santa Claus give birth. <laughs> You're going to watch Santa give birth? Yeah. All right. Now, I want you to keep a couple <laughs> things in mind, Lex. One, you're sober. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, period. Two, you're not hungry. You're not going to starve to death or anything, right? But you do have to deal with watching this over and over. Now, it's Santa, so it's a man, so it takes about 24 hours oh, for his birth and process, over. right? So you got a week of it. Eh. You, you get to watch this for a week, Lex. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, no, that's some bullshit. I don't know which one of those I would pick. then. I thought I had to watch it one time and just fear factor it, you know what I'm saying, and get it over no, with. No, 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 no. This is, no, this is, no. This is you way worse. You have to do it one week. <laughs> oh, no, nah, I'm not fucking with none of those. I just cut the TV off. How about that? Uh, you, you there is no I remote. That an option? Yeah. What, what? <laughs> there is no remote. There is no way you can turn uh, this off Lex, or any way as possible. If you, you want to do it for a week, there's always well, the gremlins. Oh, the gremlin! I can deal with the gremlin, right? I don't want to see a bum getting the blow either. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> so wait, are you saying you're running towards the water, Lex? I fuck with the water. I take my chances. I got my shit demon with me. So. I, I really. <laughs> <laughs> so Lex is going to attempt to fight a horde of gremlins underwater with his shit demon. They'll stay Damn. away. Because remember, he likes to hug people. I don't think they want to deal with that. Either. You know? Man. Yeah. That, just like the mental image that that produced was really very I much wrong. <laughs> I, I, but in the long run. Shit, demon or not, Lex, she shows the water. And the water just, like, those gremlins ain't going to stop reproducing in the water. Eventually, they're right. just going to squash your ass, because, you know, that's how gremlins work. Ain't that a bitch? I'm an asshole, though, you know? And you chose the water, though, so that means, technically, you kind of committed suicide. I know, technically, you did go into it being like, I'm going in with my shit demon. So, bro, it was a valiant effort. I love it. You went out. Right. What a fucking blaze of glory. And that's, I think you're the first person that went into the water being like, I'm going to fucking live. I might. No one lives. Might. No one lives in the water, Lex. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that means I you're dead. Die. Yeah. I might. And you know, I mean, I, I consider that a form of suicide, started. right? So according to the rules of the book, that means you go to hell. I'm sorry, bro. And even though I don't, like, you know, believe in that shit, I still play by it because it's way more fun for the purpose of the game. But again, it's motherfucking Christmas. So we're going to keep this themed that way, yeah. So you can give you a couple options, man, but you got to pick one personal hell for you. Now this, this is for the rest of everything, Lex. So this is just what you're going to have to deal with. Your first option, your first option, Lex, is you get a electric chair all wrapped up nice in Christmas lights. Okay. Yeah, Chuckles, what's the second option? All right, second hell is... You're getting thrown by a couple of demons to a wood chipper, surrounded by Christmas lights. That's outside the wood chipper, 24/7. So every time you get shredded up, they'll just resurrect you once again. You got to get thrown into that shredder again, and it hurts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm adding extra nerve endings too, just so you know. In the midst of all this, all right? Your third and final option, Lex, for your own personal little Christmas hell, all right, is you get to whole eat and shit out a christmas tree all right you got to eat it whole and this ain't no fucking synthetic christmas tree either this is a legit six foot fucking pine tree decorated with a star and everything you got to eat that shit whole and then shit that shit out whole what hell those you want splinters Lex? i have mm -hmm. to pick one of those one of those three yeah yeah i would take the electric chair on one condition. Okay. I get to bump that. I get to bump that ten million gigawatts to the brain, get real voltage shit while I get fucking electric chair. How about that shit? Yes. All right. Look, you gotta look, deal look, with that one. Like, but this is how. You gotta deal. I don't yeah, look don't, like. <laughs> that would make an awesome I, music video. <laughs> like it would make that an would. awesome. Music. Like I like. Man, Lex, this is supposed to be hell. I feel like I'm giving you some kind of... Look, here's the deal. I I'll do that, Lex. You get to hear it every 1,000 tracks. All right? The right. other 999 tracks are all Christmas. Okay. I mean, um, I like Christmas songs, honestly. It's fine. Christmas is jolliness, man. I'm In down German. with that. Oh God! Come on! It's hell. They, you oh, think they wouldn't do the same thing to you there? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! They would. I was still taking the picture. They would. They would just continue to make shit up and make it worse. And ladies and gentlemen, we do that sometimes over here on the No Fucks Given Hour. But this, holy shit, has been the 200th episode. All right. Yes, and real quick, I want to give a shout out. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to everybody that is fucked with this radio in any capacity. All the hosts, the from the fucking newest, from the fucking just is getting ready to start to fucking I don't I don't know who'd have more like. Will or you, Chuckles? I'd have to fucking think about it, though, but whatever. You know? And much love to Lex for stopping by and dealing with this goddamn madness. 
For real. Lex, any final thoughts or shout outs before we cut about this bitch? Hey, shout out to everybody out there in the world, man. That's, that's keeping the music flowing. Shout out to the underground, the East Coast Shadow Army. Shout out to all the homies out there across the country. Shout out to all the ladies out there who keep on supporting my music. And, um, yo, just love, man. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your 200th episode. And I'll I'll be listening for your 1,000th episode, man, if y'all just keep on pushing. Keep on doing what y'all doing. And it's a great. it's been a great interview. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Hell me. yeah, man. Hell yeah, Lex. It's been a fucking pleasure, man. It has. And I look forward to hearing what comes next from you as well. Ladies and gentlemen, go check out Re Beyond Redemption as well as Year of the Sword. For myself, The Unknown Factor, Chuckles, any final thoughts? Yeah, man. It's like Much love to you, Lex, for being part of this 200th episode. Yeah, Be sure to check his music out and everybody on m &E, and also much love to you, Factor, for putting me on this show to be part of the 200th episode. It's really an honor, man, for real. And also, on the 25th, on Christmas Day, I will be releasing a new free downloadable track called A Black Christmas Massacre at www.soundcloud.com slash chuckle. So be sure to check that shit out on the day it comes out. Hell yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the underground, remember, go wild. This is Go Wild by Lex the Hexmaster. Have a good night, y'all. And be sure you don't get the clap either like my stupid-ass homie did. Much love. <laughs> Hell no. Hey, for Facebook, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for y'all, if you want to go bump some dope shit, go over to nerdofucksgivenradio.com. But we're...